Call the meeting to order. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Larry Hall? Here. Alderman Hoppy? Here. Alderman Kerwin? Here. Alderman Van Dyne? Here. Alderman Kirby Hall? Here. Alderman Persick? Here. Alderman Studer? Here. Alderman Tudor? Here. All present, you have a quorum. Thank you. I declare the regular meeting of the Wilmington City Council on March 4, 2014, in town session. Uh, Council, you have approval of the minutes for you from uh, February 18th. Mayor, I thoroughly reviewed the minutes and found no errors and uh, make a motion that we have them uh, set in place on file. I motion by Alderman Tudor. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Alderman Hoppy. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Alderman Studer? Yes. Alderman Hoppy? Yes. Alderman Larry Hall? Yes. Alderman Kerwin? Yes. Alderman Van Dyne? Yes. Alderman Kirby Hall? Yes. Alderman Persick? Yes. Alderman Tudor? Yes. Eight yes, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, under the marriage report, uh, we have one thing uh, tonight, which is in regards to the resolution. It's a resolution that deals uh, with the uh, Ileana Expressway. Um, I can only reiterate, um, as we go through this process, and many of us have been here through, since this whole process began, since the Ileana was uh, first kind of created, since all the routes were there. Um, and we have uh, drafted several resolutions throughout this entire process. Um, we started with the no build because of their lack of consideration uh, for using the uh, North River Road um, Medewan area as a possible alternative for the Ileana. And we've also had big challenges uh, down the road when they, uh, that process wasn't selected. But I think it's always vital that we move forward in this ongoing process. I think the wrong thing to do would be to ignore it and kind of hope it goes away because personally I don't think it is. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that as we move forward on this, that we have a resolution in place. And it's just a start. I mean, we have to make sure that we uh, have out there what, what the needs of, of, of the community are and to uh, ensure that those needs are being met uh, as this process is going through through their public hearing phase and regards to the record of decision. Um, as you guys will see in the, re uh, the resolution and as you've probably seen on the maps, uh, one of our first items has to do with the... Uh, and these aren't in, are, are not in order of importance, they're just issues that have been uh, raised through discussions um, throughout the past. But one of the issues uh, has to do with what's known as Bobcat Field, which is our youth recreational center. Um, it's become more evident through this process as it's narrowed down that um, that is a parcel that will be uh, uh, taken if the Ileana is built. Uh, but there is also uh, issues of public hearings that come down the road. Um, even after the record of decision made is made because it is a, um, a public property. Um, but we wanted it in our resolution to ensure that we, we are very aware of that fact and uh, let them know what this, this value, this importance of this property is to the city of Wilmington. We also put on here in regards to tax revenue, as we all know, and uh, we've suffered through through many years uh, from, from the city is a lot of our property um, that it becomes as viable or commercially or industrial has value to it, it tends to be taken away um, from by government agencies that are kind of at our, our control, whether they be federal, state, or county uh, authority. <coughs> um, we're going to continue to lose more property. Uh, property that's even been developed as residential, commercial, and industrial property um, throughout throughout their uh, area or their corridor that they've concluded on the Ileana. Uh, for that reason, uh, the city does lose revenue, and we will ask for uh, a toll tax. Right now we're requesting a toll, toll surcharge of five cents um, for the first five years of the tollway. It's a process, one thing we're asking for. We also know that uh, residents in the Deer Creek and Foxtail Commons uh, could be directly impacted based on the alternative. Uh, there are some, several lots within that, uh, in both um, routes that are, are impacted because uh, there's actually developed lots or platted lots that are in both alternatives that are either have homes or do not have homes. We want to make sure that those areas are taken care of. Um, we also recognize that the uh, tollway is going to create dust and uh, have negative impacts on community, uh, neighborhoods within the area where the construction is being built. We want to make sure that though we're um, at the forefront of any discussions that go on through construction and any mitigation that it needs to be done. Uh, during that process. We also know <coughs> there's a, a, a noise area, that this will create noise, okay, no given that, I mean, we all know it is, can create more noise than what is currently there. 
um, in talks with the Ileana uh, people, they have stated that the they have density values, their density density values and how it relates to um, whether a neighborhood gets a sound barrier or does not get a sound barrier. And initial uh, talks have said that none, no areas in Wilmington uh, qualify for those sound barriers. Uh, what we're asking for is basically we really don't care what your design status is. We have uh, neighborhoods that will be impacted not only for noise but also sight too. I think those uh, walls create a sight barrier as much as they do a sound barrier. So we made sure we had that uh, recognized that in the, uh, the resolution as we go. Uh, there are also other stuff in regards to Riley Road, the Riley Road interchange. Um, and these are just some of the things that is, you know, went through staff and everything else and myself and, and through the public hearing and listening to people in areas that need to be addressed. Is this the end phase for the city of Wilmington as we go through the Ileana, this, this Ileana <coughs> corridor process? Absolutely not. There's still there still needs to be discussion. There still is, as things go forward, and as record of decisions, if the record of decision is made, which they're talking at the end of May, if that record of decision is made, there's that defined line, and we still need to make sure that we have we are um, <coughs> vocal and in the process, even after the re record of decision is made, there are still a lot of issues that we have that may not be directly. Uh, pronounced in, the, in this current resolution, um, one of the big things is they have really never come up with a, a, a way that they're going to uh, minimize the truck traffic within our own, uh, within, within our own town, which we, we would be Route 53 and Route 102. Um, the main objective of this Ileana Tollway was to alleviate freight traffic on local roads. Um, if they do nothing, if they want to continue to put tolls on at the beginning of these interchanges or Riley Road, if that's where their interchange is going to be, um, and don't give consideration to the local roads, then I can guarantee, why we, why we said we can guarantee them, the trucks are not going to use that tollway. If they only got to go to 53, they're going to take the shortest and freest distance to get there. So as we continue to go through with this, we talk with our state and federal legislators um, to make them aware of that situation too. There's got to be some type of stopgap to um, meet the objective of the Ileana Tollway if that their objective is to pull the freight off of local roads. So this is just you know, a continuation of that process as we go through with this. Um, I know personally myself, I'm going to make sure we, we stay on top of this as much as possible. Any type of meetings to go through, whether it be through the day, um, if I'm not there, um, Tony or somebody from the staff will make sure that they're at the meetings to uh, make sure that we're, um, our presence is known. And we continue to be um, at the forefront of this whole process. Um, we do know there's economic value to this. They keep saying there's economic. We can assume that they're they're, they're correct. We have um, studies done studies on our own that there can be economic benefit, but this has to be done right. If it's not done right, then there is no economic benefit. So we got to make sure that we're on the forefront of that as well. So before you guys, I know the resolution tonight. You uh, can open a discussion or any comments from the uh, council and how we proceed with this. Um, we do know that the uh, public comment period uh, officially ends on March 10th, which is Monday. Um, so that's why this resolution is before you tonight. Um, I'm looking for action on the resolution. If there's additions to the resolution as we go through discussion, I have no problem with that. We can make sure those additions are put in. Um, if council feels they're not ready to pass this tonight, then my objective will be to call a special meeting later on this week to make sure that we uh, move forward with the passage of this resolution. So, um, I'd like to open it up before we do a motion, if, if I can. Um, I know all the persons got the motion, but prior to any, to make a motion, I'd like to open it up for the council if they want to make any input in regards to this. I do have one comment or question. I think that in number three of this, with the residential neighborhoods with Deer Creek and, and uh, Fox Tail Commons, should be or would it be advantageous to include those that are also going to be affected out by Widow's Road in that area? Because I know that there are some houses that with the new the new route, it's going to be 500 and I think 32 feet from their back door. 
So I think those people are going to be impacted just as much. Should we include that in there? Yeah, I, I you know, I think we should probably um, maybe change that, as, you know, to include O'Brien subdivision um, and areas along Widows Road, uh, Water's Edge. We could include those in that. Um, some of the reasons with, with Air Creek's <coughs> Creek with Foxdale Commons is even if, it, based on the affected zone, if they chose alternative one and two, which skirts north of where the properties are, mm -hmm. um, you're talking um, anywhere from 100, or actually 75 feet to 155 feet at max would be the uh, distance between those homes, and even alternatives one and two. Uh, alternative three, which was actually um, uh, would take out both neighborhoods. There's also an alternative, it's not their preferred alternative, one or their preferred. Um, but yeah, I have no problem, and I think we should probably add, you know, all the subdivisions, Water's Edge, um, O'Brien's, um, and, and the homes along the old, uh, Yeah, because we, we, we should, you know, have no problem. Guys. What about the homes that are along River Road, or well, that, Old River Road? Um, would there be down through there? You mean like West Kentucky River Drive and stuff like that? We can. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've been not, it's not in a, in a bad way. I, I really was trying to focus on oh, on, right. on the city limits, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, but I have no problem with that in those homes on West Kentucky River Drive. Okay. But at the same time, I, you know, <coughs> uh, as this goes forward, um, even to our county leaders, that, you know, they need to really take recognition of those people on West Kentucky River Drive that are in there. And make sure they're well. right. Yes. Mr. So Rear, the uh, on, uh, number one there, you, you cite the Bobcat Field, and we do say that it must be relocated. But I guess we did not add it must be relocated at always expense. Maybe you want to add that in there. We could. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, most naturally it will be because it's, it's, it's property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's and that's one of the things that I know is going to be down the road so early on. In this process, you know, we, we we don't know where we're going to locate it. We don't know what you know because we don't know what our options are out there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to make sure that, and, I, and they're firmly aware, even in the meetings we had, that they know that um, relocation of our youth recreational area is going to be what it is. In my opinion, what I told them, what it is, times ten. Um, well, I, I agree with times ten because there's there's people from every generation of this community that put their, their sweat into that facility and made improvements over the years, that, that they'll all be forgotten when that thing right. is bulldozed away. And, and that's what I was reiterating to them on, you know, uh, on several occasions, Elvin Suter was that uh, um, this, is, this was built by volunteers, this was built by the backs of, of parents uh, whose kids played on that area. And I told them I, I can't put a monetary value on that, all I know is that but whatever happens in the replacement of that is going to be better than what you see sitting there. We owe that to everybody uh, that put time into that. I, mean, I, I remember talking to Russ Gilmore and guys back then when they started that deal, when they, when they started to work on it. And every generation of parents since then put something into that facility. So Absolutely. I think we owe it to the community to replace it better than, better than it is today. Yep. There's one leverage point we got, that's it. <coughs> I have a question about the five cent toll. Is just to be clear, that's five cents per vehicle. And can I ask how we come up with five cents per vehicle? And is, was there any kind of math or study done on the revenue that we would possibly get yeah, at five cents a, a vehicle? Yeah, based on their projections in the first five years. We conserved 20,000 vehicles per day is what they were talking um, in the first five years. It's on the low end. Ultimately, it's going to be up to 40,000 vehicles a day. So if you take 20,000 vehicles per day and five cents <coughs> in 365 days, it comes out to 1.8 million. Um, if, you take a, if you take an EAV, uh, possible what they're going to lose with some of the commercial and retail on 53 and then the homes that we would lose along the way. And EAV is probably going to be somewhere between eight to ten million dollars. And we look at that and our tax, our tax with our tax rate, that's going to be somewhere right around five hundred thousand uh, dollars of lost revenue for our tax rate over that five year period of time. Um, so if we're looking at that, 
uh, you know, that's substantial. You know, you start looking at the property gains lost. And now what I've bought is I've bought the conservative on one end, but I've bought on the elevated on the other end. I mean, it could be less than 500,000 revenue loss uh, because there might be some trade-off uh, other revenue that could come in because of the Iliana with the economic development that could happen. But we're looking strictly at our revenue loss that could happen on our property taxes. Could be as much as $100,000 a year uh, with all those properties because we potentially use up to the three alone, uh, taking that, that out and a on Corbin's property that could be potential you know, property that is no longer going to be usable um, except on the corner. And then we, as we run through town, those properties that we would lose uh, to some more houses that got uh, lost. And there was some um, language uh, or comments that were made at the public hearing that during construction, uh, property values do you know, stagnate or even go down a little bit. Um, so how do you really come up with that number? Because of that, is that impacted just to the general area or is that our whole community? Um, appraised at this point, it's throwing the dark, it's a guess. So with 1.8 million, I think that would cover our losses uh, would also add dollars to address operational issues um, because we know during the construction season we're going to be impacted in traffic. We're going to, so our police officers are going to have maybe extra details maybe during that time, <coughs> you know, which we're not going to probably be reimbursed for anything like that. Uh, then the impact to just dust and debris, uh, we could have residents you know, asking us, hey, we're being impacted by this. Uh, what other communities have done is they do do send out service master or a cleaning service to people's homes, you know, to clean that dust out during the high, high time. Should the Eliana pay for it? Yes, but we're trying to ensure we have money to be able to take care of our residents too. For <coughs> so I think the 1.8 million is a, it's a, it's a good number to cover all those costs. And it's a starting point. You know, we're asking for 5 cents. Um, I like to see 10 cents, but it's also got to be economical for on their end too. So, so there was some thought process. Has any of the communities actually asked for a amount and got? Um, any other communities have, have got what they call a fee in lieu of tax loss. Um, but these are communities that are in other where these P3s are happening, like out in Texas and Colorado. Um, they do put that formula in there. Um, how they pay that, it's just in their documents that they do have a formula for. Um, in their financials, fees and lose of, of the tax loss from revenue uh, during that short period. Uh, I did research to see how they apply that. So, we, we figured we were we would be better off to ask than yeah. to ignore. That's for sure. um, so you know we have to. I don't know if there's any other municipalities that have, have put this together along this corridor. Um, I haven't heard of any. Um, but I think we need to... Uh, Indiana is the only one that's proposing uh, something for their public safety because they don't have fire protection districts. So they sort of get their township fire departments get hit pretty heavily with uh, I-65 uh, response now. And they know that's going to increase um, for the Indiana. So they're, they're asking for a fee. One thing that was brought up in a, in a joint meeting with the fire services uh, that we don't have addressed in here, it just hit me, is maybe we need to put some language in here about uh, providing um, a proper access um, for the fire department, because now that they moved it for Riley Road, they to get on and Would we need to do that in resolution or part of the construction phase when they go through the construction phase? Well, I definitely, I mean, they, they voice their opinions. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we want to put it in here about public safety. We could. So, uh, something, you know, because there's no turnarounds. Uh, we could add a line in there to just to, to make, ensure that uh, all, all issues in regards to public safety in the Illinois uh, under the Illinois corridor are addressed. Um, Work, working with our public safety agencies, fire, right. police, and ESTA. Yeah. Okay, something like that. Okay. Okay. Well, then we can. Uh, you know, like pass this and then add what we were talking to it? What we're going to work on is um, these, these addendums. Yeah, we could uh, um, add, have those added. We could add those into the motion. Um, you know, to include, we could add the resolution, but then we could add those 
to include um, the other, like as uh, Alderman Tudor said about the other neighborhoods, um, the issue in regards to the public safety stuff. I know John's writing it down right now, so hopefully he yeah. can help us out with that process. Yeah, I can add uh, that last time about police fire. As the two that's I already added the other two comments, and I can print this out and we take a look at it now, or if you want to pass it and go on further on the agenda and come back to it. Yeah, can we? We, like. we, we have the access to print it out now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's why he brought his computer. Here. Okay. Um, if, if council's okay, we can come back to this after our committee reports, okay. um, and then we'll move forward with that. That will give him the opportunity to uh, add those items and give you guys the opportunity if something else comes up, we can uh, bring that up. After. All right? All right. Okay. All right. First item on the agenda is comments. Do we have any citizens' comments today? Now we'll move forward. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, their next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, March 6, 2014, which is this Thursday. And I believe they do have agenda in regards to Project Lego, right? Uh, no, this Thursday is the auto recycle well, uh, project Lego project project on, project uh, on the 20th. Can we announce Project Lego? Are we still under confidentiality? We're under confidentiality on the end user again. All right. Hopefully, March 19th, you'll see uh, some uh, amendments to their annexation agreement, which will identify anybody to a better ask before you get yourself in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, community reports, building grounds, parks, health and safety, all of the first six, all of the Mr. Mayor, the next scheduled meeting is Wednesday, March 12th, 2014, at 6 p.m. You, uh, Water Street. Sewer Alley, Alderman Studer, Alderman Perwitz. Mr. Mayor, next scheduled meeting is Wednesday, March 12, 2014, at 5.30 p.m. Um, please, Ernesta, um, Alderman Studer, Alderman Tudor. I have one. I move to approve the Chief of Police to fill the open sergeant position for the Wellington Police Department. I have a motion by Alderman Tudor. Do we have a second? I second that. Second by Alderman Hopkins. Any discussion? Yes, I have something to say. I believe that we should probably send this back to committee because I, I really and truly believe that uh, our commission and our council, mainly probably commission, didn't take full advice of what uh, their attorney said to do at that meeting that we all partake in. I know, I know that uh, the list isn't complete. And uh, I believe that we should send it back to the committee to make sure that it is complete and met all the requirements that John Byer, is that his name? Breuer, yes. Breuer said at the public meeting that we had that one day. And I know, I know that hasn't been completed. So I, I would recommend sending it back to the committee and bring it back up <coughs> the next meeting. And uh, uh, Pete Rampa is here. Right, to give us an update. Update submission. Pete, you want to kind of update where we're at? Yeah. Um, I did. Get, I did. Uh, between talking to Tony today and talking to uh, talking to John, uh, we did uh, come up with uh, a plan. We are going to have a meeting on Friday the seventh at seven o'clock. Uh, we are going to add the uh, additional four names to the list. Uh, she's going to provide me with the points tomorrow. Uh, we are going to vote on that list, and uh, we will. That will be all set to go on Friday. And uh, we don't foresee the top of that list changing very much. Uh, so we kind of know what, what's going on there. But um, feel free by by Friday. By Friday night, we will have uh, we will have that seven-person list. We will have the top candidate uh, chosen. It will all be on record. Uh, they're posting that meeting for Friday tomorrow. It'll be posted tomorrow. Uh, Pete, I know you've had your challenges with, with this whole process and the commission. Yes. Everybody being new. Um, based on your discussions, I know you had discussions with uh, the attorney Boyer today. Um, are you, as a commissioner, comfortable? Um, 
with the process that you got going through? Yes, yes. Uh, we, I, had, I had a couple questions I had for Boyer, uh, um, uh, for John, and then uh, he had a couple questions for me. We straightened, we had some uh, strings crossed, now we got them all straightened out. Uh, we're good to go. Okay. Yeah. Pete, can I ask a question? Have the candidates been, potential candidates been retested? Did, retested? Yeah, did they, did they have to take another test because there's names added to it? Or were they, did they take another exam or how did that happen? No, no. Uh, what happened? They, they took two tests. They took a written exam and then they took a... Uh, Everybody has now? Well, they, they all did. Okay. The written well, the beginning, they, they all did all the reports. Um, but what we did was we took the top three and uh, took them to, to took them to the, gave them to the chief for for points. Well, in retrospect, they should all have been there per the uh, previous writing. They should all been involved in that pro in the entire process. We got it. We got it figured out. It'll be done on Friday, okay. and uh, they'll all have their fair shake. Yeah, but when you said it was posted, that's not open to. Uh, it's posted for you guys to have your meeting. It, it's a public meeting. All the time. Oh, it's it, 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 yes. yeah, posted. They have to have forty-eight hour notice. Oh, tomorrow, okay. Uh, the executive secretary will post their police commission meeting for Friday. Um, so, with the forty-eight hour notice, what what he's saying is it'll be posted. It's oh, a public okay. meeting. Um, they have to uh, uh, adopt that list um, in open meeting by vote, so that's what they have to put. I know that there's been discussions, but nothing on that. Okay. Um, I know it's been a challenge for, for Pete, uh, as well as some of the other, the other commissioners. Um, in my opinion, they've done an exceptional job, um, and they've also learned yeah, from this process. I think some of the challenge we, we did, there was some. Um, there was some definite challenges through the process, but right. um, they got a hold of uh, the attorney. Um, is, is this the perfect process that we're going through? Probably not. Um, but I think this is the right process by, um, you know, once Pete got a hold of the, uh, their attorney, the person that represents the police commission, because they are, in essence, a separate entity of, of us, because that, that's how it's built up by but statute. But when that guy was down here that night, Broyer? Yes. Right. He's an attorney? Yes, he's the attorney. Why I didn't realize that. He's the attorney for the police commission. For the police because the police commission, commission has to be a separate okay. entity from the city council because based on the way the right. statutes. Okay. Are. Okay. And he gave some criteria that night that needed to be done before it was a, <clears throat> a certified list, correct? Correct. Yes. And yes. we haven't met right. that yet. Until Friday. Friday it'll be done. Okay. Yes. So I guess the question I got is why are we sitting here when it's not completed? And I'm not hammering on you or anybody in, in your area. I, I'm, I'm doing the hammer on, on console right now. I, I believe this should not because it wasn't done properly and by their attorney that this should go back to the committee, then once it's done properly, then it could come in front of council for a vote on sergeant. Not it's halfway done and hearsay and whatever. That's my belief. Any other discussion? Thanks, Pete. So what are we doing with the motion then? Well, the motion's still on the table, so I'm asking any, any further discussion on this motion. So, so Mike, I just have time. So, we're, what we're, we're, you're asking us to do is uh, approve the chief to fill the position before the uh, meeting is, uh, the list is finalized? Yes. Correct. And it's Why not, are you doing that? <laughs> you're not picking a guy. You're not, we're not picking a guy. Basically, um, I thought I'll, we already did this. No, I'll, well, what we did is we gave authorization for, and this is where, from a council standpoint, we, we didn't take it a far enough step. Basically what we did is we authorized the police commission to conduct the testing for sergeants, to mm -hmm. create a sergeant's Correct. list. Okay? What we should have done at that point in time, because there was a need for a sergeant, was to not only authorize the police commission to conduct the sergeant's test, but to fill the vacancy of sergeant. Which he had to come to council to get the permission from council, not committee. So technically what should have happened is that approval um, you could say that approval should have been done prior to them doing any testing.
okay? But the city authorized the testing to create the list, okay? So what the council's doing now, because they've already been going through that process, but followed what the council's direction were, you have to authorize the appointment of that sergeant. Because really, it, when that whole thing was created, we had a sergeant that was on disability at the time. He's no longer a part of that. He's not on, not, we have that, don't have that sergeant available anymore. So, and just so everybody understands, it is the council's responsibility to approve the position to be filled, it is the police commission's responsibility to decide who is filling that. It is Correct. not the council's responsibility. No, we have no, we have no authority, and as we found out through the process, really the chief has no authority. Correct. On who the sergeant that is. is. Correct. The sergeant. Then why does it? Why can't you then pass it if that's the case? That's what we're. That's what we're that's looking to do. That's the point. That's what we're looking to do tonight. Yeah, it's usually one versus the other. It goes both ways. You'll have a lot of municipalities that will turn around and, and actually pre-approve your authorization for an open position before they even do the testing, as the mayor said at the very beginning. Uh, so it's really just uh, an appropriation action you're taking. The, the needs there, you know, a sergeant, um, you know, retired under a disability, so there's truly an open slot for that. But the cost is still, it is an automatic for the police chief to fill that slot. He still has to get council approval because of the appropriation for the for the dollars. So, by by you're doing this action, it could happen tomorrow. It could happen three weeks from now, or even a couple months from now. Uh, well, the, the the thing is that whole testing was done wrong from the beginning. It, I think the mayor's words of challenges is, is the proper word. There's a lot of challenges. In it. I don't have gray areas. I do black and white. But you know what? I have to honestly say that these new new people, They're doing a good job, yes. Yeah, and I'm not going to knock that. It's the same way when I came on the city council. Yeah. I don't know what the heck I was doing. Right. So, I, I, I so we have we have a motion on the table. Do uh, we have any further discussion on that motion? I have a question. Uh, how long have we been without a sergeant? How long has a sergeant well, been, been a vacant since the shooting? When, 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 uh, when, when, when Sergeant Juster was appointed to uh, deputy chief, mm -hmm. that opened up a position. Yeah. So that's been 10 months now since he's been there. <clears throat> and then we just had the uh, retired thing actually just had on the police pension board that Sergeant Boyle is officially retired now uh, from the law force. So, so we have two older positions. Um, on the force right now. Do you have a corporal rank? No, they don't. No, nothing like it. We have lieutenant and sergeant. So my opinion is uh, we've had this position open for quite a while. I, I see no reason to go back to a committee like Larry said and make sure everybody's happy with it. And, and in two weeks we can vote on it again. Two weeks not going to make a big difference to me. And again, I just, I, I'm going to reiterate what I'm saying. The whole point of this is not to say who's going to fill it or the testing procedures. The whole point of this just is for the council to approve the appropriation for the placement of a sergeant. Correct. That's and correct. if we and know we need it. And that's the motion before you. Uh, correct. A after the motion, after this motion, it, depending upon the uh, outcome of the motion, will determine the outcome of uh, what Larry's request is. Alright. So do we have any further discussion on this? Can I get a roll call vote, please? Al Alderman Tudor? Yes. Alderman Hoppy? Yes. Alderman Larry Hall? No. Alderman Kerwin? Yes. Alderman Van Dyne? No. Alderman Kirby Hall? No. Alderman Tudor? Yes. Alderman Persick? No. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion passes. The next scheduled meeting is Tuesday, March 11th at 5.30 p.m. All right. Uh, uh, Finance Administration Land Acquisition Committee, Alderman Tudor, Alderman Tudor. Mr. Mayor, I have two. I move to approve the accounts payable report dated March 4, 2014 in the amount of $299,646.28. A motion by Alderman Stewart. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Stewart. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Alderman Stewart? Yes. Alderman Tudor? Yes. Alderman Persick? Yes. Alderman Kirby Hall? Yes. Alderman Van Dyne? 
Yes. Alderman Kerwin. Yes. Alderman Hoppy. Yes. Alderman Larry Hall. Yes. Eight yes. Motion passes. Mayor, one more. I move to approve ordinance number 14-03-04-01, a public water supply loan program ordinance authorizing loan agreement for the city of Wilmington, a non-home municipality. We have a motion by Alderman Studer. We have a second. I'll second. Second by Alderman Persick. Any discussion? Yeah. This, uh, this loan appropriation is to get that new piece of uh, water main put in uh, on 53 on Baltimore Street. Yeah, First yeah, Street to uh, West River Road, I think it is. And yeah. that is the piece that Gary's been doing the most complaining about. Saying that, that is a, our probably biggest troublesome piece, and I think we're using that the grant program we're using or the loan program. It's a loan, it's the rural development program through a low interest loan. Like I say, right now they say it'd probably be 1.9%. Yeah. And that's. Correct. That's the one that he's. Dead. That's basically like the loan that we have for the sewer plant. plant. Correct. And I, have, I understand uh, from reading yes. the, the loan that it can only be paid back by proceeds of the water plant. Just yeah, oh. just like we do with the, uh, the the initial one. So how much so more is that going to cost the taxpayer? Nothing. It's, um, I can run the. Uh, nothing more is the issue. Our 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 fees that are in place right now. Can't run the analysis. Um, there'll be enough there for for paying that debt. That for our current water plant improvements, we have the debt on right now, which is about four hundred fifty thousand. Then adding this four hundred thousand, we have enough funds that are being generated from the five dollar fee base fee, which is what we're collecting that fund for the capital. And that's what, what that adjustment was for. Was I think we took into account a lot of that, the improvements and everything down the road. We did um, when we made those adjustments to our water rate what the base service be so it really doesn't impact it where we have to make best changes to the water. And that's it, a 20 year payback on that? Uh, I believe it is. This yeah, one's a 20. Yes. Yeah. Is it still the 25 percent forgiveness on that? No. no. They don't, this one does not have a they have that one like they did on the water. Yeah. yeah. So what's the plan if it doesn't cover it? You raise your water. Well, up. what you do is if, if we don't have enough funds to cover then they have in there in the loan docs that we don't have to go to the users, and that's where we raise the, we raise the rates. So, I think we've already proved we've got proactive in that. We have yeah. definitely got to go on and raise the rates. Yeah. So we proactive. We slide up there. Well, if, if, if we didn't do the rate study, we wouldn't be able to get this loan right now if we didn't raise the rates. And the need is there. I mean, this is where this line is at. It services our commercial areas, which we have lost revenue when those, those are shut down. And plus our public works guys are out there repairing these things. I think to do nothing is more yeah. um, dangerous than what case. we're doing right now. This whole thing is a risky thing, so I don't, I don't like it at all. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the other... What the, what's, what's the alternative? What's the alternative? Let's see, Fix it 20 years, years ago? ago? I don't know. We do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're in Detroit. Yes. I don't yeah. think we're anywhere near. Yeah, we're not. We're not anywhere near Detroit with our uh, finances. I really hate Jeez. to see another increase going forward. Yeah, so oh, there's no, no plans for that? Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't throw. We don't throw. That's our biggest thing. We have that would also our plan for the water plan to do, so that's, I just... It's our, best, it's our best valuable asset right now is water. We can't sit on our hands. Yeah, we can't. All right, any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Alderman Studer? Yes. Alderman Persick? Yes. Alderman Tudor? Yes. Alderman Kirby Hall? No. Alderman Van Dyne? Yes. Alderman Kerwin? Yes. Alderman Hoppy? Yes. Alderman Larry Hall? No. Six yes, two no, motion passes. Yep. Okay, our next scheduled meeting is Wednesday, March 19th, 2014 at 6 p.m. Ordinance of license, Alderman Hoppy, Alderman Kirby Hall. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, second reading, an ordinance amending provisions of chapters 130 and 132 of the municipal code of ordinance. And the next scheduled meeting is Tuesday, March 11th at 6 o'clock. Um, I do want to make notice on the ordinance and license uh, next Tuesday. Uh, the meeting begins at 7 o'clock. I have added to the agenda uh, for next Tuesday's meeting uh, discussion in regards to the waiving of the impact fees um, and the water sewer tampon fees for new home construction. Um, what I also have done is I've directed uh, 
uh, Executive Secretary Ziller to send out notices to all um, other ta all taxing bodies that have impact fees, which would be our school, I believe our park. Um, I'm not sure if the library or the fire district doesn't have impact fees. Um, they've also been served notice that we, we want to have an open discussion at 7 o'clock um, next Tuesday. So it'll be in addition to your ordinance and license, it's going to be on your ordinance and license agenda. Uh, because I think it's now is the time is really vital for us to move forward with uh, trying to, uh, I guess, get in the game or get ahead of the game because we're not the only municipalities looking to uh, greatly reduce those impact fees for future home construction. And I think it's vital that we get on move forward with that. So that'll be on your agenda for next week. I'll make everybody <coughs> uh, Personnel, collective bargaining, uh, Alderman Hall, Alderman Persick. Nothing at this time, but I do believe we got executive session. I believe we do. Let's check the calling. Uh, before we go to city administrative report, does Mr. Graff please step out? Uh, Mr. Urban, did you have that new uh, resolution printed up? Uh, that's for 21 to uh, print it out, and I have made changes on it so you have a uh, under delineation and cross out showing what the changes are. And, Tony was also going to print it out a clean copy for signature purposes. So okay. that's where Tony went right now. Tony tells me he has no city administrative report or okay. and that there's no need for executive session, session for land acquisition. Okay. Good. Good. Um, attorney's report, Mr. Urban. Thank you. Uh, during the last couple of weeks, I spent time working on the Ileana resolution that was before you, uh, and then we're going to come back to shortly. I also did some research in regards to the Sellerville Wilmington property. Um, and I drafted a wine tasting ordinance that uh, I believe sh you know, possibly they'll make, make it to the next committee meeting. I don't know if it's going to be O&L or... Yeah, it'll be under O&L. Um, and uh, in looking at the wine tasting ordinance and looking at what other jurisdictions have done, uh, you might be able to find a hundred separate ordinances, and of those hundreds, they're all different. Uh, each municipality is taking a different look at this and de determine what they want to do. Um, and I've also worked on the water loan supply um, ordinance that was before you. Um, after you approved it, what will happen is that the ordinance itself and the exhibit will be published in the newspaper allow citizens, if they object to it, to file a petition within 30 days if they get enough signatures. Uh, other than that, then the EPA will process things and we have quite a bit more work to do in regards to crossing the T's and dotting the I's on that. Uh, and that's all I have. Um, just, Mr. Mayor, while with the... Can you, can, you, can you step out and see what we're talking about? Absolutely. Well, we're, we're discussing that. Now, under ordinance and license, we had a second reading of uh, uh, provisions in chapters uh, covering 130, 132, and part of those provisions are to recognize the new state law that has to do with concealed carry. But right. when reviewing the the existing ordinance, um, it, it is my belief that uh, that ordinance needs some updating and probably should not be visited by ordinance and license at, uh, in its uh, uh, with, with its. Uh, I think this correlates the changes into that. Into that. It's the it's the old language that I have a problem. With. The new language looks fine to me, but. Uh, so the old language um, makes it, uh, if in reading the ordinance, it makes it illegal for a kid to have a BB gun, a bean shooter, or a slingshot on his own property in, in the city of Wilmington. I think we really need to revisit this ordinance and read it for what it says. Uh, it's a little bit old and outdated. I mean, uh, if, th if this be the case, everybody in the community that ever bought their kid a BB gun is violating the city ordinance. Well, I think uh, 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 we, we can look into that as far as discussion, but we'll have to. You know, I would think that they're, they're in there for, for reasons because naturally a BB can't be held within somebody's own property. And I would, would have to get legal opinion on that, find out why, you know, well, if it's still there. There's, it yeah. might be in other municipalities either, and there might be reasons to well, that. Once again, uh, you know, when we talk about concealed weapons and vehicles, there's language in here that says that you cannot have a knife in a vehicle. Not any particular kind of knife, it says a knife. Right. And it says a razor. So if I'm carrying my razor in my vehicle, I'm, I'm violating the law according to our ordinance. I just want us to revisit this. Well, Maybe it needs right. to be cleaned up. And what we'll do is we'll, share, we'll make sure that this is um, separate from statute because state statute might read that. And if state statute reads that, then we kind of have to follow what the state statute has, even though it does kind of seem It, may, it just may be some old antiquated language that we need to take a look at. Yeah, we'll look at that. 
Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Will that be done at another ordinance of license? Not this next one, since we got more stuff to talk about. Um, yeah, I thought having this, that's why the uh, meeting for next Tuesday in regards to the uh, um, the waiving of fees and stuff doesn't start till 7 o'clock. Your oh, meeting, well, our meeting starts I, at I, 6. I, I understand. But okay. I, I've instructed the other uh, taxing bodies that it won't begin until 7. seven. Okay. So even if you guys get done with your uh, agenda okay. items prior to 7 o'clock, we'll just have you guys recess <coughs> until 7 o'clock. We can what? We'll just have you guys recess until 7 o'clock. Oh, I see. Okay. So, um, so Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. I just wanted to put it on one committee. And naturally, I encourage all the uh, all of them to be there uh, for that meeting because I think it is uh, very important when we move forward with that. We'll try to offer some incentives for all the All right, uh, before you guys is the resolution. As you can see, uh, there has been change. The changes have been put in place. I have one, number eight, the farming community. Okay. Since we do have some areas that are plus, that's our plus, that's our history. Yep. That's the one. Uh, what I'd like to really quickly do is, are there any other comments that come from the council before uh, Alderman Persick makes the motion to uh, pass this resolution? I thought we were going to put down uh, Old River Road or whatever that road is. Kankakee, West Kankakee yeah. River Drive. I mean, I know they're in the in the county when you get to a certain area, but oh. they're, I don't know. But can't we just add it now? Yeah, I'm we'll add it now. I'm, I'm sorry, what, was, what did you say? Well, and number three is to put down... Um, well, how about we just put the concerns of Wilmington farming community and yeah. residents on West Kankakee River Drive yeah. must also be addressed. Yeah. Okay. So... That way, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Nice. So uh, under uh, John, under your motion, just put uh, read that motion, and then uh, with with amended uh, amended amending number eight to include West Kankakee River. But obviously not very smart. Uh, Frank said tollway, and you have at the state's expense. Is that the same thing? Is the state building this road, or is the uh, oh acquisition is going to be the state? Yeah. Acquisition will be the state. That's the, that's part of the, that's the public partnership with the whole private and public private partnership. So the state's so really to buy us a little bit better property. Yes. <coughs> Youth recreation. Okay. Hey. 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 I move to approve resolution number 2014-01, a resolution of the City of Wilmington expressing concerns on the only land expressway and the environmental and socioeconomic impact on the citizens of Wilmington. As amended, uh, as amended is number eight. To include the residents. To include uh, the West residents. No, that is what you said. And West King. West Kankakee River Drive residents. Did that work? Uh, that work, yeah. 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 Did you get in the farming community in your own? Yes, the farming community is also in the We just added that to the Okay. All right, so we have a motion by Alderman Persick. We have a second. Second. Second, second by Alderman Kerwa. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Alderman Persick. Yes. Alderman Kerwin. Yes. Alderman Larry Hall. Yes. Alderman Hoppy. Yes. Alderman Van Dyne. Yes. Alderman Kirby Hall. Yes. Alderman Studer. Yes. Alderman Tudor. Yes. Eight yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Our next regular city council meeting is scheduled for Wednesday. Wednesday, wait, wait, that. not Tuesday. Wednesday, March 19th, 2014, 7 o'clock p.m. You have the primaries on that day before. Yes. Uh, so, seeing that, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Oh. Oh. No, for me. Oh, no. You didn't have a I was just going to wish Chicago a happy birthday today. It's been 77 years. That's right. Second. Well, it's kind of interesting because it could be 480 years. Who seconds the motion? Almost as long second. as. Second. Who's got second? I'll second. Thank you, Kevin. All in favor? Aye. Aye.